we are going to be doing, we're going to be doing our first digital artifact. And what a digital artifact is, is just basically like a piece of work that you create using digital tools. Um, the, the lesson plan that was given to me by the state of Alabama suggested um, a couple of different things. I know they suggested uh, like Google Slides, Google Docs, and Canva. And, you know, having a uh, Baldwin County having been, you know, one to one for a while, and, you know, most of you have plenty of experience with um, Google Slides and Google Docs. So I figured we'd take some time to learn a new program. So let me share my screen with you. All right, what I want for you all to do, if you haven't done it yet, is make is to open another tab and you will want to create a Canva account at some point. I'm not exactly sure. You know, I've had mine for so long. Um, I think, yeah, I use my I Baldwin account to create my Canva. Okay, uh, Aiden, what's your question? You can unmute and ask your question. When I first opened um, Canva, there was a little pop-up saying, use Google to create an account, and it literally just fills in your details. And okay, makes perfect. So you can sign in with Google. Perfect. Uh, Lillian, you have something to add to that? Um. So when we turn it in, do you want us to like copy a link and then... Put it in the assignment or just wait i will show you what we're going to be doing with that in just a minute okay all right okay. so uh one of the things that i personally use canva for is um i, I can switch because once you create an account then um it saves your designs so i have used um used it for example the, the tabs that you see at the top of my courses, you know, I created those in Canva. The, um, the announcements that I have in my, you know, on my updates page, I created in Canva. For the social media that thing that we did last week, I created that in Canva. Uh, I used to frequently be able to post on Instagram and I created uh, Instagram graphics for, you know, silly things that middle school students say. So I used it for quite a few things. And I like for, you know, sometimes graphics catch people's attention. That's why there is a, an entire uh, field out there for um, graphic design. Because, I mean, advertising is what brings it in. So... That being said, when you are in Canva, let's go back to the beginning because you probably don't have any designs. At the top, it tells you several different types of, of things that you can create. Presentations, Instagram posts, uh, checklists, Instagram stories, logos, planners, whatever you may be. Now, I don't tend to do the stories because it's, most of the times the stories move. And when you download that, that's, that's difficult for me to use a, a downloaded Instagram story with Schoology. And I primarily use this with Schoology. All right, so you can create something new or you can just click on, let's say, Instagram post. Now I, would, I use Instagram posts for um, for the announcements because the Instagram posts are square and the square size works better for me. The sometimes I do the Facebook cover for my avatars for Schoology because those are rectangular in shape. So if you're thinking about where you were going to use that particular graphic, you, will help you to decide different shapes. Okay. All right. So when I do this, one of the things that you have to decide is uh, what do you want it to look like? 
So there are all kinds of templates on here. Now, I choose the ones. I do not know why it's not sharing. Let me make sure. Oh, it opened up a new tab somewhere. Um, all right. It gives you some that are free. And then, like, if it doesn't say free on it, then it's going to cost you some money. Do not pay money for this. All right. There's no point. I have never paid for a single one of these, and I have been using them for quite some time. So you can use one of the templates that are there. Let's say that you want something in particular, like computers. And it will bring up templates that uh, have computers in them. Now, the ones that have the pro on them, that's subscription based only. And again, I don't use those. So you can start with a blank one and you can upload your own pictures. So let's see, right? Your photos. These are, are, some of these are pictures that I've uploaded. The ones that are trending are pictures that other people are uploading to use. So, um, you know, different things that I have searched in the past. Like I used this graphic. I think, I think I used that graphic or something like it for the social media one. I might be in a different account that I'm usually in because I don't see a lot of my photos. But once you decide what it's going to be, then you can just drag it over. So let's say that I wanted there we go. The background. I keep forgetting that I can't choose on that monitor. You can have a solid color background. Or you can use some of these free textual ones. Now, when you do this, you most definitely want to think about, you know, what's going to look okay. You know, you can also, I, I, I'm trying to click on the wrong thing. You can experiment with this. You know, and obviously that doesn't look good. So I, you have to have like a, an idea a little bit of what you want. Uh, if you like this one, you can choose a different color so that it matches a little bit better. You can even go to, I see, and this is kind of difficult to try to find something just the right shade. But you see how that works. You can just kind of until you find something that you're happy with. Now, one of the things that I have done in the past is you see that it has a color code right there. Those are HTML color codes. And so you, you can search online. Let me show you. I need to I don't have I don't have that one, but so I can go to like a HTML color code from an image. And, and what you can do with that is you can upload a file. It's just slow to upload. I don't know why it's not cooperating. It's, I'm probably trying to do too much. But anyway, you can experiment with this. Basically what you do is you um, you upload a file you can find it from a website or you can just, you know, pull it from your downloads or whatever. And then you can click on a point within that file that you want to match that color and you will get the HTML color code here. Once you get the HTML color code, that, I think that one is like 
I'm jacking up my system. Oh, okay. I'm trying to find a picture. Yes. All right. So when I, I can hover over it, click, and it gives me the color code. I can go back. I can hover until I get to the color that I want, and I can use that color code. Once you have the color code, you can... Um, Type in the color code here, and it will automatically go to that particular one. And it saves, like, all of your document colors. So that's a little bit of some of the things that are possible. Is it something that you're required to do? No, but it's, is it something that you can play around with? Yes. And later in this school year, whenever we are working on our web pages, and one of the things that we have to do is experiment with background colors, or whenever we are creating our um, our sprites, which is basically our character in some of the games or websites, uh, and you want it to be a particular color, then you can go to an HTML color code to pick from an image, or you can. There are just some reference sites that say here's navy blue is this code or you know hot pink is this code and you can look up the color codes which will be easier than trying to use the um oh shoot i stopped sharing it now anyway it, it's easier to use the color code than it is to look at uh let me show this tab instead. This right here. Because this can get really hard for you to match exactly. So that's why I like to look up the HTML color codes. All right, so that's some backgrounds. You can do solid backgrounds. You can do textual backgrounds. Uh, you can do backgrounds with pictures. All right, so next is you can add text. There are, there are different size texts. Uh, you can choose, you know, a heading would be later. We'll talk about the different tags that go with a heading. The headings like the big text. Uh, subheadings would be medium. And body text would be small. So let's add a heading. This is a test. Uh, you can rotate it. And what I particularly like about Canva is that it gives you markers to show, okay, this is in the middle. And like I said, you can rotate it. Uh, you can duplicate it. There's lots of things. You can change the font. Here are all the fonts. Now, if it has a crown beside it, then that crown means that that font costs money. Um, I don't think that you can upload fonts to Canva. I've never tried that. I do know that you can upload fonts to other programs. I know you can do it with Microsoft Word because I have uploaded new fonts for Microsoft Word. and I've never tried it with a Google Suite before, so that's a question that I'll have to find an answer to. So... You can change the color of the text. You can change the size. Underline it. Now, right now, this particular font, I don't think we'll do this. This is like switching from lowercase to uppercase. This is where you change whether it's centered or align to the right, align to the left, or in block letters. You can make bulleted items here. That's where like it puts numbers or a, uh, a dot beside them. This right here is where you can change the spacing. 
So if I said this is a test, just a test, but I say, okay, these words are too far apart, then I can adjust the spacing between the letters and I can adjust the spacing between the lines. And you can just kind of eyeball that and see what makes sense. Now, when I hover over this, when I see the, the north, south, east, west arrows, then that lets me know that I can move it. When I see it just like diagonal or left or right, that's going to resize your image. I haven't experimented much with animation. Uh, I've done some for like morning announcements. You know, whenever you go to a school and it has, um, you know, the scrolling TV, I have done some things with the animation there, but you can't do much with animation inside of school G, so I haven't really done much with it, that. Okay, and that is the effects of the letters. Okay, elements is like other things that you might want to add, you know, like different graphics or lines. So if I decided that I wanted a line between the, the picture and the graphic, you now it's white at this point, I can choose another color. I'm gonna go with the green that I had before. I can choose what the line ends look like. I can choose how thick the line is. And I can choose whether it is a solid line or just a um, dash line. So really, this kind of program is something that you need to just spend time experimenting with okay ah, there we go i didn't even know we could do that see i learned something new just playing around with it just now uh, let me resize this because okay, there we go so that purple line shows up that tells me that i'm centered you can search for something. So let's say that you wanted a picture of a leaf. To add to this. So, okay, here's one that's free. I'm going to drag it down here. And again, you can change the colors of those as well. Or you could use a real leaf. Just don't put it on top of something that you want to. Okay, I don't like that one. But I, you can drag it off. The trash can to delete something is right up here. So if I decided just to get rid of this, I can click on that trash can. Okay. And then we've already done the templates. The photos graphics, videos, but videos are one of the, the pro ones that you would have to have a subscription for. Audio, again, is something that you have to have a, a subscription for. And honestly, I have never had to pay for any of these. Now, I have used GIFs, GIFs, I don't even know how to say it. I look it up and then I forget. Um, and as an image and use that that works sometimes so you, that's just something that you have to experiment with all right so whenever you are ready to download it to share there is a download button up there now this PNG file is a photo file you can submit photo files in Schoology this is the one that's suggested because you know, lots of times when people use Canva, they're using this for professional reasons. So they are um, wanting something that has high quality resolutions that they can print it and it doesn't look like something 
that has been created on just, you know, just a regular computer. Now, PDFs, the JPEG is the smallest file. That's the one that's going to have the lowest resolution. That PDF print is going to be your, your high quality stuff. If you have videos and stuff in them, you'll need these two. Uh, I haven't experimented a lot with that because, like I said, you know, you can't upload some of these document types in the programs that I use. If you have some sort of website that you're using or something else and you want to experiment with it, knock yourself out. Because this is the kind of stuff that you figure out as you play along. So let's say I'm going to download this as a PDF. And that's how I created the assignment that y'all were supposed to do this week with um, the, 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 about the old people and the scams. Now, this is just a graphic, but you can do flyers. Now, I have that saved in my downloads, and I can use it in any way that I need to, and it looks professionally done. And that's one of the reasons why I like Canva. I can also go to, I don't have to click save. You know, that's that's one of the things that I love about it. Because you once you, while you are creating it, Canva is automatically saving it for you. See, there's the document that I did right there. And um, you can edit it, you can change it for later. Like this one right here that I put no students on, I've used that label for lots of different things uh, and I just changed the label and so uh, this right here I've used I use that for several different classes I just changed the the words in the middle but those are all the different types of things that you can do with Canva and I definitely recommend that it is something that you experiment with because okay. these two right here those were my, um, from when I did the Instagram, um, you know, I would alternate between a blue post and a yellow post. So I just kept these two posts and I edited them as I need them so that it would keep my, um, whatever you call it, the name of the Instagram page on there. All right, I'm going to stop the recording at this point and answer any questions that you may have. I can get my cursor back on my other screen. There we go.